All right, so we've got a boiler here that has in-floor radiant heat. And the problem is it's not warm in the area they want it at. So got us a little munchkin boiler here. And same pro. Looks like we actually got a little low on the pressure there. That can cause a problem with these, and that's probably what's going on. Um, but they actually have a fill valve on this one here. Some of them I work on don't have fill valves, but it's one of those automatic ones. Let's see what's going on with that. Come over here to the Tico zone panel. And it's calm, so let's see if we can find out what's going on here, because don't believe any of these pumps are actually running. So let's see if it's an issue with the pressure switch or what. Usually I get a code on it. I'm not real familiar with these. It's not a bunch of them out there, but they seem pretty good when they work. So I wanted to make sure it was getting water through. We got a 15 pound set here already. Comes through the meter. I used to be able to backfill it. And I isolated the boiler here and as you can see when I open that up and then open this valve we are getting water in there so the next question is, is why is it not getting to here because my pressure down there is low and I know there's a spring in here so it's kind of counterproductive last I checked but since we're isolated I'm gonna open that up see if that springs gummed up full of crud I think there's a screen in there too so I went ahead and took that spring out. You can see there's a screen in there. It looks like it's fairly clean. Here's the... Um, since we have a 15 pounder there, I'm not sure why we have double. So I'm going to probably get rid of that because I opened this up both ways. Look at that. Nothing's coming back. That ain't good. There should be some water in the boiler. It's a little weird. All these valves are open. Why is that not the case? Let's see here what's going on. Got water there. Oops. Look at that. Something just broke loose. So we must have been gummed up in here somehow. Huh. So now it's working. So we need to clean that thing out. I think we've got issues there. Our fill valve's not filling. And like I said, the pressure on this boiler now it's nothing. Um, it won't run unless it's got water pressure on it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my little bleeder here that probably is gummed up. Got that screen opened up. You have to take it apart on this side here. Valved off here, open the water up here. I'm valved off back here. Valved off the pumps. I'm gonna force any of that air that I got in there out of there. Got a bleeder over here on this side. We like using refrigeration stems to bleed boilers. It's, it's cost effective and it works. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can get some pressure going here. So that should pressurize this little manifold here. Make sure we got stuff in the way. Make sure we get all the air out. Maybe it's not such a deal. There wasn't that much air in there, so I need to go ahead and put the bucket underneath that piece. Probably got trapped in one of those, but got that open. Get it all going. Do we have enough pressure now? Let's find out. Pressure's better. 
still ain't quite where it needs to be at. That gauge ain't good. Or it's not adding because there's some crap in this thing. I think we're gonna have to take it apart, unfortunately. We do have a union there, don't we? Yep. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to take this thing apart. I can't imagine it being uh, that much stuff in there. When you check your pr tank pressure here, you want it relieved from the boiler. It came in at nine pounds. So let's go ahead, set her at 12. I'm gonna go for 13. I love this little thing. It'll pump up your ATV tires, car tires. That spring that I removed in there was the check valve, not the uh, spring that actually pushes up on the uh, diaphragm or whatever you wanna call it. I should, there we go, close enough. All right, so, of course, these have always got to fall down. They're not getting used very much right now, unfortunately. Heating season. So by the time we unhook this, which is pretty good about not losing too much, that will make a difference. So let's get back in there and see what we got. It, uh... What the heck? Things off. <laughs> Guess you're asking for too much. Some of this Milwaukee stuff just doesn't hold up. Let's try it again. It's kind of cold out here. I mean, it's got a cold. <laughs> How do you got one pound when I ain't got nothing on it? What the heck? <sighs> See, this is why I don't get too concerned about it being exact. It's just off. As soon as you put it up there, it just starts to... Yeah, so that's about 12. All right, by the time we leak a little bit, there we go. Let's see where that puts us at. All right, so we went ahead and opened that up. And it didn't immediately bring it all the way up as far as I wanted. It got it up to about 9 to 10 area, which I think this cuts out at 8. I'm going out of memory here. So I put, pulled the fast fill there, and which, you know, it uh, brought it up to where we're at now. So let's go ahead and see if this thing will run now. Which, if you notice, we're now getting a 110, which is possibly... The water temperature which it does feel about that temperature so let's see if it's getting a call for for it to run here because it was saying pro earlier it leaves room to be desired I'm telling you not sure how that turns like that. Kind of scares me a little bit. Okay. Okay, we're good there. Nothing. Unfortunately, there's no manuals down here, which is always nice. And they don't put nothing inside there. Okay, well this thing seems to be calling for heat still. Yep, they're all calling there. So why are they not running? That's the next question. Let's go check out our panel here. Okay, so we're checking our power coming into the circulator even though it shows Even though it shows it's got LED over there. It does have 120 there, so but you go over to your circulator pumps here. <clears throat> Hot neutral. I don't have anything. 
Nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. Sure looks like it's calling for it to run though. So, not really, these are power stealing stats, which I'm not a fan of either. Okay, check across our fuses here. It's a little hard to do with the phone. Okay, so no matter how I measure it, I'm not getting 120 volts to the circulator. I pull these relays, I lose the 120 volts, but the neutral, it's not connecting. If I go from neutral here coming into the panel, to the hot leg, it's got 124 volts. When I go from neutral to hot, nothing. Nothing on the next one. Nothing on the next one. Here's me, the neutral's not connecting to these neutrals over here. This is high voltage, so once again, my normal disclaimer, don't play with any of this stuff, unless you're trained professional. Know what you're doing. Don't kill yourself. I'm not responsible for it. So, anyhow, um, I have to find out if there's something wrong with that board. I'm going to probably kill power to it and check the backside and see if the traces are blown out or something. It's almost like um, like something went wrong and blew out, the, you know, blew out the neutral. All right, so I just used my jumper cable. Jumped from neutral over to these neutrals, and each one of them ran full 2.3 amps. So something's wacky in the board. You can see the difference in the brightness of that. You can see that top one's calling, sort of. That's a power stealing stat for you. So, basically, what ended up having to do, we bonded the neutral from this side to this side. There's obviously something wrong with the back side of the board. So, to get their heat on, I went ahead and built me a white wire because all I have is a bread. So, I took it from the neutral here, and all these neutrals are bonded together already on this side of the board. But for some reason, it wasn't from here or over here. And uh, originally, when I was checking here to each individual one, they were all showing 120 volts because I didn't have it bonded here. I don't know how to explain it real good other than the fact that it was looping through the motor. And yeah, that'd be the best way to do it. The power was coming off that, coming back on the neutral, and it was coming from the neutral to the, each individual one and showing 120 volts because it was feeding through the unused winding if you want to call it that. So what I ended up doing is isolating the thermostats. I swapped the relays back and forth. Basically once I bonded it, boom, shazam, hello, wake up, you're sleeping, got it, and we're good to go. So now this thing is working. You can see it's glowing red. I haven't cleaned the flame sensor or anything yet, but it's been running good. Uh, that PR code, I did find the book here hiding unlabeled but it was sitting there so we got that I'm gonna look up that code because I'm pretty sure that PR was met pressure so we'll look at that because I had this before on one of their other ones so let's take a look here all right yep just like I figured pro means pressure switch open and uh, won't clear until you make sure it's good to go so the pressure switch has to be 10 pounds so we got that, and once you check for leaks, it's hard to say. Well, what we had originally to, to combine things making it worse, you have this here set at 15, which he didn't need that. So I guess the this was not done by, by us. There you go, that other one finally just closed. So we're good there. Um, myself, personally, I prefer this over this thing here. Uh, what they really need to do is gut it out of there if you really wanted to do that but um that looks like a lot better quality than that little mech shift thing these work but definitely wasn't helping us none uh water's definitely coming back kind of cold and she's not ramping up very fast so um this is all in floor radiant heat uh wooden floors uh so it's not going to be set for very high so it's uh, probably not set for a real high temperature. I'm going to check through here and see what exactly it is set for, make sure it's set right. But yeah, this book would kind of come in handy to have for myself, honestly. I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to see if I can find the uh, part number on this little turd. And uh, 
download this thing. All right, so we got the flame sensor out of there and you can see it looks pretty ratty. So that's why I wanted to make sure I cleaned that up before I left. Basically what we ended up having, this wouldn't run because the pressure was below 10 pounds. This wasn't opening because the bladder wasn't pushing up on the pin, which is fighting against the resistance of a spring to add water to the system. Probably didn't help a whole lot that this was at 15 pounds of pressure itself. So it wasn't a whole lot to overcome any restriction of that, uh, not pushing very hard on it. Then you had your neutral over here, basically that's got a problem with the board. So I'm gonna tell them they need a new board too. Might go ahead and see if we can't get them a new flame sensor because that's looking kind of a little shoddy. I know it looks like just a matter of time till that goes haywire. All right, so it looks a lot better now. Still, you know, shows some warpage. We'll go ahead and get that back in there. Kind of interesting. This actually uses a Phillips screw, which is kind of, you know, don't usually see that. Kind of nice that's something normal for once, so makes it a little easier. So we get that other one in there. So we got that tightened up. It should relight here in a second. And like I said, this thing's still calling for those circulators to run, so they seem to be getting warmer. Not real warm, but they're getting warmer. And uh, I'm gonna wrap this thing up. If you guys like the video and you want some more like it, you know what to do. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook under HVAC Survival. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one. All right, we're back to replace that zone panel there, relay panel. We have a P09, which their instructions so show pro, pressure switch open, which, you know, I'm pretty sure it's trying to tell me the pressure because there's no other P09s in here, which sucks. This is back to when you don't work on certain manufacturers equipment very often it just I wish there wasn't so many different ones out there I don't see any other P's so I'm assuming they mean pressure and the nine might just be the pounds of pressure that's at I don't know if that's a digital one in there if that's too old for that but 10 is where it's got to be at or above so what we got here I mentioned the last time was you got a nice backflow preventer here um, pressure control and then you had it built in here. The homeowner did this himself. So I don't have all this plumbing crap on my truck. So I'm trying to figure out a way to bypass this thing. You can see the pin down there. That's what pushes on the top of the um, pressure tank. See the square uh, thread thing in there, it goes through. I'm gonna back that thing out. That should get rid of it. The screen and stuff is kind of plugged, trying to clean that. It ended up ripping the last time. So go ahead and uh, finish getting this out. You can see the city water is not very good. Of course that's metal pipe so what do you expect? But that might work out for me and I won't have to go looking for a bunch of fittings to change things over. So that's where we're at. Alright so that thing comes out once you take out the nipple. That just goes right on through there. There's the seal with the screw head, the pin, I'm just gonna leave that inside there. So if we ever wanna put it back together, we can. But for right now, that's wide open. Go ahead and put the plug back in there, put the tank on there, and it should work just fine. And then I trust that watch uh, pressure control a lot better. Plus it has a fast fill valve on it, which is kind of nice. It's set for 15, which should be perfect. And then like I said, you got the backflow preventer in there. And then that was what this other thing was right here. It was a backflow preventer. It's a generic one, but it worked basically a check. I'm going to finish cleaning that garbage out of there and get her back together. All right, and you can see it adding a little bit of water there very slowly. It's spinning. Got it all back together. Blood it out as best we could. Air trap there should catch it. And let's see if our pressures came up at all on our tank. Yep, we're about 15, so that fixes at least that problem, thankfully. Let's see if that was our only issue, or if it even was the issue, because like I said, this instruction suck when they don't have the dang code in there. And the reset button doesn't seem to work either. I don't know if you have to hold it for 10, 20 minutes, or what exactly. 
starting to purge the draft motor there, but nothing major is going on. The only other code they got in here that has a 9 in it, that's if the display ain't defective. No flame detected. So, which, like I said, this thing doesn't make sense and then you have other stuff. So, these were sold way before I came here and we don't uh, have that many of them out here. At least I don't see them that often. So, we'll look through here a little bit more. I never even heard of a Munchkin before coming here, so... Yeah, I just don't see anything. I'll have to look through this some more. All right, so I had to unhook the power stealing thermostat resistors there. This one here was causing enough bleed resistance through that was causing circulator pumps to call when there was no call for heat yet. So we went ahead and unhooked those. Just got to do without them. They worked all these years without it. So continuing forward here, let's see if we can get past this stupid P09, which I have a feeling might be an F09, but either way, if that's the case, I'm not sure because I have no technical support from Munchkin because those guys are not answering their phone. No flame detected. The heater will make three attempts, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? That's I don't think is it, unless it's a defective deal. So two of the zones is calling there. It's a lot easier to read this one than the other one. The other one had on the side where you couldn't see it. So just I've already checked through all of my connections on my boiler there. All of my... Um, <clears throat> Limits and stuff are closed that should be closed, open that are supposed to be open. So it's just a matter of finding out why it won't reset because the reset will not reset. Don't matter whether I hold it forever or, or whatever I do, it don't matter if I kill power. It's very frustrating when you can't get good information because the factory doesn't answer their phone. So, um, like I said, the rollout's done. I've checked the exhaust, everything's clear out there. Uh, the pressure switch is closed like it's supposed to be. That switch is closed. These ones seem to be fine, so not sure yet. Kind of disappointed here that it's such an issue, especially being as we've got, you know, the 15 pounds pressure that we need to have. Everything should be where we're at, where we should be at, where it wasn't at the last time I was here. So it's just very frustrating. All right, so finally got a call back from Tech Services. The reason why that P9 doesn't show up is because it's not a code. So what happened was the flue got snow in it and they cleaned it out and when they did the snow melted whatever the case and water just rolled down here soaked that soaked the board I had corrosion on the back of that and most likely damaged the draft motor so uh, they're considering changing from LP gas to natural anyhow so I mentioned possibly going with a Navion water heater which is something we sell and uh, so we're going to price them parts versus changing it over and the customer is considering changing it to do the whole house adding more in-floor radiant throughout the rest of the house instead of just a small uh, addition and the garage and go from there which they could tap onto this and then distribute it somewhere else also so that's going to wrap this one up uh we're going to head on to the next call uh otherwise we're good to go here at least with that part there that's uh, not a, a loss or anything there and uh that's about it on to the next one.